Hello my poor holic friends, Loida here from loveacrylicpainting.com. Today I want to show you this quick method, this very simple way of testing your paint densities to know if you have a higher density paint or a lower density paint and use that to your advantage if you want to create cells without using silicone. So it's a very simple way. Let me just show you what to do. So let's pretend like we have um, these three colors. We're going to test two at a time, uh, but let's pretend like we want to test the green and the red, and we want to know which of these two has a higher density. So by knowing that, we will know which one will sink. That will help us determine um, how we can create the cells. So let's pretend like the green one is heavier. So this one will sink and this one will float. So then um, we would want to layer these in a way where you have the, the less dense paint on the bottom and the higher density one on the top because when when you have those two layered that way then the heavier one will want to start sinking to the bottom and the less dense one will want to rise to the top so then as that happens you know this heavier one starts going down and this less dense one starts rising that will create your cells so that is why you would want to know which of your paints are higher density and which ones are lower density because that way you know how to layer them if you want to get cells or you can also use that to not get cells okay because you can also layer them the opposite way now if you don't want to create cells guess what now we're going to layer our heavier paint on the bottom and our less dense paint on the top and they're gonna stay where they are because this is not as heavy. It doesn't want to go down. This one is already, you know, it doesn't want to, well, this one is heavy, so it will want to sink, but it doesn't have anywhere else to go. Like it's already on the bottom. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, and I'm sorry, I'm so close to the camera and kind of just like using this space. But um, what I wanted to do is show you the, the test that I wanted to do so you can see it and um, I wanted my camera to be super, super close so that you can uh, really appreciate what I'm doing here. So that is why I have my camera so close. Okay, so let's start the test. So let's just do, what, what you're gonna do is just basically put a drop of one of your paints, okay? And then you're going to add another drop right on top of your second paint. Sorry, let me add a little bit more before we grab some of the red paint. I just I think I added a little bit um, and I needed a little bit more. Okay, so we have our green, green paint there. Let me move it a little bit more back. Now let me add a drop of my red paint right on top and you want to make sure that you drop it really cl close to it you don't want to like drop it from super high because then if you do then you know the gravity will just like it could just cause that paint to sink um just because of the gravity and not really because of the density okay so i have that now we're gonna go backwards now we're gonna do red on this side and we're going to add a drop of green on the top so all we're doing is changing the order of the paint what you can see so far is that this drop of paint hasn't really moved that much Okay, let me, maybe, let me bring the camera a little bit more down and closer so you can really see that from an angle right on the top. 
you can kind of see that the red on this side has just kind of stayed on the top. You know, it, nothing really is going on. However, on this side, you can see that the green paint is actually sinking. Like that red, I mean, that green paint that we put on top just kind of, you know, didn't stay where it was. It, it just kind of started sinking and it started getting smaller and smaller and the red is kind of like overtaking and um, it's just kind of like eating up the green paint. So um, let's leave that for now and let's do that same test with the blue and the green paint. Okay, we'll add the blue right there. Now let's add some green right on top. Now let's do the opposite. Let me add a little bit more green here. And let's add the blue on the top. So after we know what which ones are heavier, I'll let you know how we're gonna layer them depending on what it is that you want to achieve, if you want to get cells or not. Let's just kind of see what's going on. Um, this one still kind of staying the same. This one, you know, the red is, you know, the red circle is bigger than the green. Um, this one kind of seems like it's also staying the same. And this one, I think the blue is getting smaller. Like the blue circle is kind of getting slowly smaller. And if we did this test with paints that really have, like the densities are really far apart, like one is super dense and one is super light, you will see that the higher density paint is going to be eaten up by the lower density paint, meaning that the higher density paint will sink and the less dense paint will rise up and that will just, uh, you know, that less dense paint will completely cover or will almost cover all of your denser paint that just sank to the bottom. Okay, let's do the same test, but now we're still missing, uh, we still need to check our red and our blue paints to kind of see how those interact with each other. Let's do that here. Okay, let's add some red paint right there. Now let's add some blue. On camera, and now let me add some blue right here. And let me add some red on top. I don't know if you can tell, but let me move it a little bit this way. Oh my gosh, my camera's falling. <laughs> okay. In this blob right here, you can kind of see a blue halo let me see if I can get you up closer. I'm not sure if you can see it, the reflection of, of this light. Maybe let me turn it off and see. Okay, I think that's better. Okay, so there. Can you see this halo? It's like a, a blue ring a blue darker ring on the outside of the you know metallic blue 
That means that the blue paint is sinking below the red paint and some of the blue is kind of showing through the red paint. So we know then that the blue is heavier, it's more dense than the red paint. If the red was denser, it would sink and you would be able to see more blue coming up. But it's the blue is not coming up. Like actually here, like the red is just kind of like covering the blue as it, as it expands, as it just kind of flattens out on the surface. The, the red is just kind of staying on top and the blue is just staying where, where it is. So this means that technically the blue is denser because it's sinking and you can tell that by this blob right here. The red is coming up, the blue is kind of disappearing. And you can tell also by this because you can see that the blue is just not rising. The red is just staying on the top. So let's start ordering our paints from heavier to less heavier, okay? So for now we know that the blue is heavier than the red, okay? Heavier, less heavy. Now, what do we know about the green? Well, um, gosh, I can't, okay, let me move it here. Actually, I'm gonna put these over here on this side. Okay, I think that's better. Okay, so what do we know about the green? So by looking here, we know that the green is less heavy than the blue because this didn't move, okay? The green stayed on top, so that means that that's less heavy and the heavier one is just on the bottom. They didn't switch places. And also you can tell by looking at this circle here because you, you see more green over here than blue, like the green kind of started eating up the blue. So we know that this, the blue is still heavier than the green. So we'll put that here, okay? So blue is heavier, then is green. Let's see if red is actually Let's see if green is actually heavier than red. So let's look at our next example here. Now here, we saw that red is rising to the top. It's kind of eating the green. We started with the bigger drop like that of green and now it's, uh, we don't have as much. Uh, we have more red here. Same thing happened here, like, well, not the same thing, but here, nothing really happened. Like the green just kind of stayed put and the red kind of stayed put. So the top one is the less dense. So the red one is less dense. The green one is more dense and that's why it's, it's staying on the bottom. So yes, so that one is more dense than this. So there we have our paints layered from more dense to less dense, okay? Heavier, less heavy. Now, how would you layer your paints? Now that you know that your blue is heavier, is the heaviest of all, and the red one is your least heavy of all. Well, if you want to create cells, you're gonna put the heaviest one on the top and the less heavy one on the bottom. I'm just gonna use these two. I'm gonna ignore the green one because I can't hold three at the same time, okay? But you get the idea. Heaviest on the top, less heavy on the bottom because now what will happen is that the heavier one will want to sink and the less heavier one will want to rise. And as that happens, you will create some cells, okay? Now, if you don't want any cells at all, then just layer them, the less dense one on the top and the heavier or the more dense one on the bottom. And then that way, they'll just stay where they are. The reason that this one, the red overpowered the blue is just because this red paint is a lot thinner 
than this blue one. So what happened here was that this one was more fluid, more liquidy, and it just kind of like spread out on the surface of, of the blue one. And it just basically, it just covered it. So the density or the, the thickness of your paints also matters um, when it comes to like seeing both colors. When you have paints that are not exactly the same thickness, you will have some paints that will just completely cover other ones, uh, depending, you know, where they are placed. Uh, but if you have similar uh, thicknesses, yeah, thicknesses, is that how you say it? If you have a similar, um, yeah, if they're similar in the consistency, then you will most likely see both colors, even though you might end up seeing one more than the other one, but you'll still see both, okay? Like all these examples here, okay? Depending on how you layer them, but you'll be able to see both colors rather than an example like this where one ends up being almost covered by the other paint. So there you have it. That is a very simple test that you can do with your paints before you actually start your pore painting. No need to measure or weigh anything. All you need to do is do a blob test like this. If you liked this video, please let me know in the comments. Please share and subscribe if you haven't done so. And I will be seeing you in my next video. Bye.